Hi there, and welcome to Plant CEO. In today's episode, I'd like to welcome Rick Roberts, the General Manager of Crack. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? Really well, thank you. And you? Yeah, I'm good. Great to have you on the show. You're currently in your office in Shepherd's Bush, which isn't too far from me, actually. Yeah, obviously, COVID restrictions dependent. There's not as many people in the office as there normally are, but yeah, we are in Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. So let's start with uh, you telling me a little bit more as in what Cracked actually is. Yeah, I'd love to. So um, Cracked is the UK's first and most versatile liquid plant-based egg replacement. Um, It's made from primarily from pea protein. And we launched into the UK market just over a year ago on the 18th of November last year. Okay. And um, so you've had really good traction already. I've used it already myself in some Yorkshire pudding and it worked really well. And I picked some more up yesterday from my local M&S. So yeah, congratulations on the launch of the product to get it into all those retailers already is fantastic. Thanks very much. We were really fortunate. We had um, uh, Scott and the team at The Vegan Kind um, took us on board in uh, November of last year. And then we went straight into Marks and Spencer's. In January, we were in Whole Foods. In February, we were in Selfridges. And in May, we were in Morrison's. So, yeah, the the build has been fantastic and um, really grateful for the support of all the retailers for that. Yeah, awesome. And uh, are you looking to do a big push also for Veganery in 2022? Yes, yeah, we are. We're, we're looking to work with Zoe at Veganuary, specifically for Veganuary 2022. I'm doing a, a brand new TV advert, which we'll talk about, I guess, in a little bit of time as well. And we're also talking to a number of retailers to see if we can extend our footprint still further. Yeah, that's awesome. So can you tell me how you actually came up with the concept to create Cracked and how is it structured company-wise? Yeah, of course. I mean, first things first, I feel like a little bit of a charlatan because I wasn't here when they created Crack, so they brought me in at a much later date. So um, David and Johnny, the um, owners of a company called Bingham and Jones, who are professional development chefs, they came up with the concept about four years ago, and they were making a, a vegan bacon product. Why don't we try and make a vegan egg? How difficult can it be? And then... About four years later, after about a thousand iterations, they realized how difficult it was to actually do that. So David and Johnny came up with the idea. And as they got pretty close to a product that was working really well, they engaged with uh, Sarah Dean at Noble Foods. And Sarah Dean and David and Johnny went into a joint venture, which is separate from both companies, which they then employed me to come and head up. So the company that, that I'm GM for is called Plant Heads. The first product within that company is called Cracked, and that's how the business is operating at the moment. Yeah, okay. And uh, apart from the egg products or, you know, in the egg arena, would you look at other areas or other, you know, food types to disrupt within, I guess, Plant Heads as well? Yeah, I mean, I, look, I mean, nothing's off the table. So I think... David and Johnny are, you know, super experienced development chefs. They've done a lot of work for a load of brands, um, including brands like Heck. So they're always looking at new opportunities to disrupt the market, as you say. But we're very focused at the moment specifically on Crack the No Egg Egg and what products Crack the No Egg Egg would have a right to play in and our consumers would expect us to be playing with. Yeah. So exactly what sort of market are you going after? And, you know, how much is it actually worth? OK, so so the UK egg market in grocery is worth about a billion pounds at the moment, give or take. And we estimate that the uh, egg replacement category within grocery is probably worth £150,000. Now, that was the data that we got before we launched. We've done about half a million pounds in the first year. So we've already massively blown uh, that category out of the market already. But if we sit there and say eggs are worth a billion in grocery, and there are 2% um, of the UK population is vegan, which I think is pretty old data. I think that's 2019, 2020 data. And I would expect that to be significantly more by now. 
then you know even if you just got your fair share you'd be sitting there going well the category for a plant-based egg replacement would be in the region of 20 million pounds so loads of headroom to go after but it's a super new category so even where do you put it in stores is a challenge to talk to the retailers about about where would the consumer and where would the retailer expect to put the product yeah so i guess the category that you were talking about before would be those um companies that have the powdered solution as an egg replacement product versus this being like i think the first liquid egg product right um yeah. and those other brands would be stuff like oregon or easy egg or follow your heart where would you also put ogs in the category okay. as well okay so i think you've got i think there's two two separate things there so you've got the powdered egg replacements like the brands you just mentioned which obviously sit in the ambient aisle and you need to obviously rehydrate those products and so forth but you can make cakes with them and all that kind of stuff with OGS, the aquafaba is also an ambient product. I think it does a tremendous job um, for helping cakes to rise, but I think it's not a whole egg replacement. So if you think about what Cracked can do, so those, those two categories are ambient. Cracked is a chilled product. It's a whole egg replacement product. So you can make scrambled egg with it. You can make pancakes with it. You can make cakes with it. You can make omelets with it. So they're two very separate categories, I think. Got it. From your experience, especially at the grocery retailers, where have you seen it working best in terms of which part of the chilled section does it work well in for you guys? Yeah, we commissioned some research with Louisiana at the Vegan Society. And the feedback we got back was pretty, well, it was inconclusive. So a third of consumers said, we expect to see it in dairy aisles. A third of consumers said, we expect to see it in chilled bakery. And then a third of consumers said, well, it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here. So in Marks and Spencer's, we're in Dairy Alts. In Morrison's, we're in chilled bakery. And I think this is the main challenge about starting a brand new category, which is even the consumer doesn't really know where they expect to find it. So at the moment, we're really testing and learning which, which place it fits better in. And then obviously, as, uh, as we get more experience and more, more data, we'll have a better idea of exactly where it should go. Yeah, good thing is that it definitely stands out, right, from a packaging point of view. With the font that you chose, the logo and the colour. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's definitely, it, it definitely stands out on the shelf. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah we'd agree. I think the company we used, MK21, um, did an amazing job with the packaging. Uh, we're super pleased with it. And as you say, it's kind of as you're walking along, it really stands out. In both those categories I'm talking about, in Chilled Bakery and in Dairy Olds, there's actually nothing else that looks like it. So we do have great standout. Yeah. Um, I recently had Josh Tetrick on the show from Just Egg. And, you know, it would be great to hear your thoughts on his company, but also like his stats that he gave was that there's two trillion eggs being consumed globally. And he also sees them making a small dent isn't, you know, we basically need more companies in this space, right, to go after that opportunity. So what do you think about what uh, Josh is doing at Just Eggs and the global opportunity for your product? Yeah. Um, so look, I, I've, I've not met Josh. But um, I've seen him, I saw him obviously on your interview and I've seen him at, at, at some shows talking as well. And other than the fact I'm hugely jealous of his Hawaiian lifestyle, um, <laughs> I, you know, he comes across as a super, super passionate guy about what it is that him and his team are trying to achieve. And, you know, from my perspective, he, he's like a trailblazer. He's certainly a trailblazer in plant-based eggs. And now he's looking to replicate that in cultured meat I think he called it cultured meat that's um, right and look you know I welcome the help that uh, he, he mentioned in his um his interview with you that he was planning on launching in Europe soon I welcome his help he's a super well-funded company they've obviously got lots of marketing dollars they've got a really good product so it takes more than one product cracked to start a category and, and launch a category 
So, you know, you only have to ask Pepsi and Coke for that, right? So they're both pretty big, successful companies. And I don't think that um, the launch of Just would be at the detriment of Cracked or the launch of Cracked is at the detriment of Just. I think there is enough space for everyone. If Josh is talking two trillion eggs, that's, that's quite a lot of volume for us both to be going after. So I welcome it and look forward to those guys concentrating on doing what they do really well and we'll concentrate on doing what we really do well. Yeah. And if we think about the ingredients now, your main ingredient is, is pea protein, whereas theirs is, for example, mung beans. What are the other ingredients that you're having in your products and some of the health advantages compared to a traditional egg? Our product is largely made up of pea protein, as you said. Um, it also contains gallon gums and methacellulose and beta carotene. But what we try to do is make a low cholesterol, low fat product, which we have vitamin enhanced. So at the moment, we're vitamin enhanced with vitamin B12. And very soon, we'll be launching a product which is enhanced with vitamin B12 and with vitamin D. And obviously, at the moment, everyone knows what focus there is on um, getting more vitamin D into everyone's diet. So hopefully, that will be um, an advantage for everyone as well. Yeah. Also, if we bring back into the loop the, you know, the powder substitute that's that we spoke about before. I know I've tried your product in Yorkshire pudding and it worked really well. But where do you see your products working well compared to like the powdered? I'm not sure if you've tried just eggs yet as well. And, and where do you see the differences there? Yeah. So look, the feedback we got from the consumers about powdered products is that they are quite technical, some of them. So you either need to use chilled water or you need to use the ice water or you need to put the water in the, uh, the mix in the fridge, um, et cetera. The thing about cracked is you open the bottle, you pour it and, it, and it's ready to use. So it's like a liquid egg. It is immediately consumable well, to, to cook with um, and therefore super, super, super easy to use. It's also really versatile. So you mentioned Yorkshire puddings. And it was funny because when David and John Ian uh, did the research to start with, they one of the things that the, the, um, the vegan population was saying to us was, we just want something to be able to make a decent Yorkshire pudding. And so that was one of the things we actually, we've got that on the front of our pack because you know if I launch yeah. this product in America, I say it's great at Yorkshire puddings, they're going to sit there and go, what? But <laughs> in the UK, it's, you know, that's a big thing. And if you go on our Instagram feed, um, uh, cracked underscore it, and look on the tag sections, you will see people with loads and loads and loads of Yorkshire puddings. And I remember when we launched back last year, there was a, there was a Facebook spat between an experienced vegan and a new vegan around Yorkshire puddings, where the uh, inexperienced, the, the new vegan had sat there and said, oh, I found this crack product and I've made amazing Yorkshire eggs. And she was, as Yorkshire pudding, sorry. And she was basically called out, saying, no, 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 you have used an egg in that product. It's like, no, I really didn't. I really didn't. We're all sitting here back at the office going, this is great, look at this. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that is, that is an advantage to the product. You can, you can bake amazingly well with it. And that is actually what we developed um, the first product, version one, for, for baking. Yeah. And, uh, you know, York, Yorkshire puddings is, is quite an art, isn't it? You need to get the all temperature right, but the batter is the most important, right, um, to get that uh, right to make, it, to, to make it rise and not too much. <laughs> Exactly. So yes. Yeah, so you look. I mean, we're we're quite we're quite adept to telling people now. You know, use fresh baking soda. Make sure you've got the oil hot in the tins, and then about halfway through, press down the middle with with a with a little spoon. But I mean, that's if you can get great Yorkshire puddings out of it. Those things are those things are little things to get over overcome, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So tell me about the, the audience that you're, you're going after. There's a big appeal to vegans. Obviously, there, there might be some vegans that are 
very experienced at baking, I guess, and they might be using things like you know apple cider vinegar, etc., to help it rise or aquafaba even. Um, so it's great for people who want something quick, you know, or if you don't have time to to get all those other products, you don't have it, or even to new vegans. But are you catering also and and pushing your marketing towards people who are looking to reduce their consumption, or or you know people who are meat eaters who also want to decrease dairy what sort of audience are you catering for or or marketing towards yeah i think that this is this is evolving for us so um when we launched we were very much targeted at experienced vegans and almost exactly what you just said there what we what we discovered was that actually a lot of them are using chia seeds or flax seeds or aquafaba or banana puree all these things. And actually, they're having amazing results with those products and they're used to using them. Um, and so, you know, they're sitting there going, oh, this cracked idea is quite nice, but maybe actually I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. What is what has become more evident is as um, people are moving from flexitarian to vegetarian to veganism, is they are, a lot of them are sitting there going, Oh, I wish I could have, I don't know, let's take Toad in the Hole, because that's the first thing that blew my brain. And we saw that on our, we saw it again, we saw that on our Instagram feed. So these people that are less experienced um, uh, and are looking for something which is more, um, re- replicates an egg more and easier, they're the people that we are, we are finding a loving product. So, so as I said, so we saw people making toad in the hole with vegan sausages. We hadn't even considered that, that that might be something that people people would make. And then you also mentioned, mentioned about um, reduced terriers or flexed terriers or whatever you want to call them. What we think is we have to create a product which is so good that somebody can sit there and go, I'm going to make this. I can either use eggs or I could use cracked. Do you know what? Today is my reduced animal protein day. I'll use cracked, and they can use it and not even notice the difference. So, so when I joined, the reason that I joined was I got, um, I went through an interview process, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as one does, and then they, I said, look, can I try the product? And they said yes. So they sent me the product, and I made brownies, I made pancakes, and I made scrambled eggs. And I gave them to my 10-year-old and 7-year-old, and they couldn't tell the difference. And I went, okay, I'm in. Say the scrambled egg version. I know you have lowered, you know, like kind of like the black salt, for example, to give it that sort of eggy taste, it, mainly because you don't want it overpowered with the salt in, in the baking. But the, your, your kids didn't know the difference even from the taste of the more of the eggy flavour, I guess. Yeah, so we put so I put black salt on it. So look, they could tell that it was different than a scrambled egg, but they didn't know what was different about it because it looked the same. It, yeah, the mouthfeel was the same with that little bit of black salt on it and a bit of ketchup. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, ketchup does a good job with uh, with this. So yeah, definitely adds to it. So I mean, that's really great that they didn't ask too many questions, right? And it's like, they're happy to, to eat it. Yeah, well, look, on the brownies and the pancakes, they never, I never even told them. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you look, again, if you look at our feed, um, all the way back at Pancake Day, the pancakes that some people were making were just, just amazing with the product. Yeah. Um, you have to send me a good recipe for the pancake because that's what I'm going to try next. Okay, uh, I'll do perhaps that. Perhaps this weekend. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a there's a good one on um there's a good one on uh, our website on our recipe section on our website but if you go onto instagram and google um foodie fit mummy then she had she did an amazing uh, recipe for it so um, awesome so yeah lots of good places to find stuff yeah yeah my, my girls definitely like the fluffy ones that i make uh, you know that, like this the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <Amazing. yeah. laughs> American style ones so what are your I know I know we spoke a little bit just there about the audience but you've also done some great work on creating some TV ads 
and and getting the message out you know maybe on on cookery shows but it would be great to talk about the work that you've done especially on some of the CTV ads or, or the apps that are running uh, and how you've done the targeting on that as well okay yeah, so we um, last year we um, did three TV ads, three different TV ads. We used um, Ruth, um, uh, Ruth Hanson, um, who was on Great British for, um, uh, Kitchen. And we used um, Jenna, who's an Instagrammer under um, Dirty Begazine. And we used um, Nish from a restaurant in South London called En Route. It's a really cool vegan restaurant in South, South East London. So we did three different executions, one of a brownie, one of a cake, one of um, pasta. And we kind of A-B tested those on, um, we did the first burst on ITV, and then the second burst we did on Sky Ad Smart. And in actual fact, there's something that's just come out today from Sky, I believe, saying that we had set a new record for the increase in brand awareness on their platform. Uh, where we grew it by 17.4%. And look, really we're, trying to, we're trying to kind of attract different different people with that. So, you know, Jenna has a really great um, Instagram page where she's super passionate about veganizing recipes, et cetera, et cetera. Ruth is a professional chef and can show you how to make pasta with crack the no egg egg really easily. And then Nish and the boy, uh, the boys down at on route were kind of just like two really nice, really credible, um, really engaging um, guys that, that, that we thought, you know, they loved the brand and we thought that they worked really well for it. Yeah. Did you get any feedback in terms of those three ads and which one performed the best? Yeah. So um, in actual fact, the one with Ruth on the, on the pasta um, performed the best. Um, that, that video has had more than a million views on YouTube now which is pretty big for a brand that has only started a year ago. So um, Ruth's one, I I don't know whether it was Ruth or whether it was because you can make pasta, egg pasta with it, and obviously egg pasta versus kind of dry pasta is more creamy. It's no egg pasta, obviously. It's more creamy, the texture's smoother. So I'm not quite sure what the reason behind it was, but, but that was the result that we saw. Yeah, awesome. And so what have you got planned for your next TV ad that you launch? Is it is it January that you mentioned there? Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, just to just to finish off on the rest of the advertising we did this year, we also did uh, the size of buses. We did a massive outdoor campaign with some huge billboards, including the um Hadid billboard um on the A40, which looks amazing. And so we did all that kind of stuff as well. But with regard to what we're planning for January, it's literally just been finalised and touched up now. And we're really pleased with, with how that looks. So um, obviously I haven't got it to hand. I can't share it with you yet, but it will go back onto Sky. We'll try and beat the 17.4% that we, we just <laughs> got um, and uh, see whether or not we can beat those numbers and you know provide an even more engaging kind of advert than the last one we did and is there anybody else that you're targeting as well uh yeah there is so um we are also targeting um people that are allergic to eggs so um we get those kind you know those kind of emails that make you glad that you're actually doing what you're doing makes everything worthwhile so we'll get emails saying my son is is intolerant of eggs and um, I have been able to make him his first birthday cake, that kind of stuff. So we know that about, there's about 2% of the population that are intolerant to eggs. So if we can demonstrate to them and get and reach them and demonstrate that they can have cake, birthday cakes or waffles or pancakes, then that's a really important um, audience to go after, I think. Yeah, the allergy-free market is very important. Like there's a company called Little Bandits who have created an allergy-free yogurt. And, you know, as you mentioned something about waffles, waffles is a great one, right? So because even when you go into some of the, um, you know, the treat dessert places, you know, when I go in there, like, can I have this waffle? And like, no, can't I have that one's got egg in it. It's like, oh, walk away, sad, sad face. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, but there are more more restaurants coming out with like you know they might have a special batter mix in, in the fridge to cater for for vegans and people with allergies, right? So I think it's super important. Yeah, and I guess that's one of the things about crack. So you know we're allergen free. You're low in cholesterol. You're low in fat. You're vitamin enhanced. It's a lot of stuff there to put on the bottle to let consumers know. And, you know, there's, we, we probably need to start selling a bigger bottle to get all that kind yeah. of stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. And where are you looking now, I guess, in terms of the replacement, obviously no egg product, what are you looking to do sort of range-wise? And what about your country expansion plans, you know, you've been focused on, on the UK market up till okay. now? So with regards to other products, I'll keep it a little bit close to my chest, but I guess the, what, what, we, what we're doing at the moment is we are talking to a lot of consumers and asking them, okay, so we've got this brand, Crack the Low Egg Egg, where would you expect us to go with that brand? So would you expect us to do X, Y, or Z? Now we've had some pretty good feedback from them, which gives us confidence that if we can develop the products that they're looking for, then we've got quite a big market there. And, and we've done a lot of development in it already. So we, um, we've, done a, we've done a lot of consumer testing with it of the actual product. And we're also talking with uh, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of people, um, retailers and manufacturers um, about um, providing that product for us. So I would assume, you know, sometime next year, We'd have, if we sat back down in the room and had another had, had another one of these chats, I'd be able to tell you some really exciting stuff about the products that we're we're bringing to market. Great, yeah, I'll be happy to hear more about it when that comes out. Okay. And um, which uh, countries now? I would imagine eventually world domination <laughs> in your exactly. sights, uh, but at the moment, I think you you know you're really making sure that UK is working correct for you. But uh, what what's new for you market wise after the UK? Okay, so yeah, you're absolutely right. The first thing is to absolutely get the UK nailed and our focus is, is very much there. But we have had a huge amount of interest globally for this product, as you would expect. We are going to be going into a retailer in Holland. Probably by the time this airs, we will be live in uh, Jumbo, which is a retailer in Holland. We're having a number of discussions with a number of major retailers across Europe. There has been huge amounts of interest in the Middle East, all the way over in Australia, New Zealand, and likewise, obviously, you would, as you would expect, a lot of interest um, from the States and Canada. So I think the thing is, we're going to be choiceful about where we're going to go and where we think we have a, a proposition which will resonate with the consumers that are in that marketplace. Yeah, I think, you know, Holland's a great market to be in next. You know, there's, I'm not sure what the stats are, but there's definitely a good appetite for vegan products there. Yeah. So, yeah. So look, for example, they do a, a national no meat week. I think that's in February or March time. Um, okay. They have, they launched their first ever totally vegan um, supermarket in Amsterdam about six months ago. And I think the growth rates in veganism in, in Holland are significant. So yeah, I mean, it's a great, it's a great market to go test whether or not cracked can be stretched outside of the UK, which of course we believe it can be. Yeah. And it's a great market for farming, isn't it? Obviously they're so experienced about farming in, in the Netherlands and also distributing it to all around Europe uh, as well. So they've got expertise in that area as well. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. And we're really pleased with the distribution partner we've got there. They are, uh, as you say, they've got a, a big network of contacts um, across Europe. So undoubtedly that will be, that'll be useful for us. Yeah. I didn't ask you, um, where's the product actually made? Uh, is it made in the UK? Yeah. So the product's made in the UK. So it's made in one uh, site and then we transfer it to another site to be HPP. So we put it through the high pressure uh, process. Um, uh, and, and that has to be another site. So maybe two sites in the UK. Okay, cool. Awesome. So thank you so much, Rick, for coming on the show and for the launch of the products. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with next year, 
and it being in Netherlands now as well. And yeah, just uh, just to stay in touch with you over this uh, process that you're going through. So it's awesome to get you on the show. Well, thank, thanks very much for inviting me on. And yeah, I'd love to come back and tell you more about what we're doing as and when we start doing it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Rick. Speak to you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.